WordPress 6.6. Thanks to Kinsta for sponsoring this video. Kinsta offers high quality WordPress hosting for freelancer agencies and websites owners all over the world. If you are searching for high performance, great security and awesome support, I invite you to try out their hosting at kinsta.com. In this video, I'm going to show you the most important features coming to WordPress 6.6. Sync pattern overrides, style variations for fonts and colors in block themes, the new grid layout, negative margins, the new pattern management interface will be available now also in classic themes. Lots of improvements and enhancements in the data view, the way that we see and access data in the new site editor. An improved and polished design for the publishing flow of pages and posts. New features, improvements and enhancements for Gutenberg and some cool new settings, like the rollback feature for automatic plugin updates and tons of accessibility and performance improvements. Here we are, WordPress 6.6 is going to be released on July 16th. And as always, we are ready for big enhancements coming to our favorite CMS. And while you're watching the video, tell me your thoughts on WordPress 6.6, which are your favorite features, and most of all, which are, in your opinion, the features that are still missing in WordPress and that are very important for you to adopt the new site editing experience and a block-based theme. Because at the moment, if we want to create complex websites using just the site editor, it is quite tricky. Let me know what do you think in the comment section below, and I will give you my opinion at the end of the video. My name is Pascal, and I'm the founder of WP Roads, the YouTube channel where I share with you my passion about WordPress with news, tutorials, and reviews. And now let's dive deep into WordPress 6.6 new features. Sync pattern overrides. Sync patterns are awesome if you want to repeat the same kind of content throughout the website. For example, here I have a newsletter call to action in this page, and I've decided to use the same call to action into my services page, for example, right down here. And this is just a simple sync pattern, which means that if I need to change anything about design or content into this pattern, I just need to edit the page and go here and click on edit original. And simply here, I can change whatever I want and the changes will be updated throughout the website. Let's change, for example, here the title, subscribe to my dog letter back, and in my newsletter page, it has been updated, but also in my services page, if I reload the page, I will see the update, subscribe to my dog letter. And of course, I can even make some design changes. Let's say that I want to change the color of this button. Okay, I'll make it like this, I save now, and when I go back here, the newsletter page has been updated and also all the other instances of the same pattern will be updated, voila. But what happens now if I want to use the same call to action, but I need to change the content? Let's say now that in my services page, I want a different call to action for this sync pattern, but I still want to keep the same design and I still want to control it from a central location. Well, in this case, WordPress 6.6 .6 comes with sync pattern overrides. Let's see how they work. Now, to enable this new feature, I just need to go into the sync pattern, click on edit original, and now I will choose which content I want to be able to edit, still keeping the same global design. For example, here, I want to be able to change the image, the title, the description, and even the link of the button. And let's see how we can do it. I select the image, I open the settings here, I scroll down, and I see that in the advanced tab, I have a new option, which is called overrides. I can click on enable overrides and here it will ask me to give a name of this override. In this case, it will be the CTA image. Okay, I enable this and I do the same also for the title here and the description and the button. So I select the title, I go to the advanced tab down here and I enable the overrides down here. Okay, CTA title, enable. And I will do the same also for the description. Enable overrides, CTA description and enable the overrides also in the single button. Be careful here to select the single button and not the group of buttons. Okay, so the single button here, advanced tab, enable overrides, and here my title will be CTA button. Okay, now when I'm back to the page where I'm using this sync pattern, I will be able to change everything. You see here, I select the pattern and now I see that I can change the CTA image, CTA title, CTA description, and CTA button. And this is awesome because all these changes will just affect the content of this particular sync pattern without affecting the others and most of all, without affecting the design. You see here, I can replace the content and you see here, I'm changing the content, the image, the title, and I can even place here a different URL in the button. And here, as you can see, voila, I'm using different content on the same sync pattern.
And of course, I'll still be able to use the same sync pattern, the original one, in different pages. As you can see here, for example, in our team page, I've inserted a call to action, which is still the original one, subscribe to my dog letter. While in this page, which is the services page, I have been able to override some content, the image, the title, and so on. Let's see now what happens if I need to change some design settings. I just need to go and edit the original one. I can do it by simply clicking on one of these instances, click on Edit Original, and here I can change, for example, the background. I can also change the color of the button. Okay, I go back to the page of my newsletter call to action, which is updated, perfect. And when I reload also the other pages, you see the content is different, but the design is the same. Beautiful. I can centrally control all the design while still being able to change the content into different sync pattern instances using the new override feature. This sync pattern overrides feature opens up a lot of different possibilities. For example, you can use it to showcase your services cards or your testimonials by keeping the design system consistent. Here, for example, I decide to go and edit the design of all my testimonial cards that I'm using throughout the website. I just need to go here into the site editor. I go to the patterns, my patterns. I'll choose my testimonial card, which is this one and I simply need to change here whatever I want. Let me change, for example, the color. Okay, so this is my new design, I save, and when I go and reload all the pages that are using this sync pattern, voila, this is beautiful, you see? And all the pages will be updated automatically. While, of course, since I'm using overrides, the content is still different. And in this case, I'm showcasing some testimonials on different pages, but of course you can use it to showcase your services or some other kind of call to actions, as we already saw together. And now, what happens if you have many different sync patterns and you need to manage them in an effective way? You just need to go and click here into the three dots and you will see this manage pattern option, okay? And from here, you will be able to go and click on my patterns and from here, you will be able to manage all your saved, synced, and also unsynced patterns, which is awesome. Here, for example, is my newsletter CTA. And if I click on it, I will be able to change my design to add or remove some content, and it will be reflected throughout the whole website. For example, if I decide that I do not want to show this disclaimer anymore, I can just simply remove it, and then I save, okay? And when I'll go back to the website, voila, the disclaimer is no more there. And even in all the other pages where I'm using this same pattern, even with overrides, I'll just reload the page and voila, the disclaimer has disappeared. Manage patterns in classic themes. And good to know in WordPress 6.6, even if you're not using a block theme, but you're using a classic one like Astra or Bloxy or Hello Elementor, you will find a convenient link here to manage all your patterns. Wow, simply awesome. The grid layout. Another awesome feature coming to WordPress 6.6 is the grid layout. It is pretty simple, but you can already make some interesting designs using it. Like, for example, this bento style design. Let me show you how it works. To start creating a new grid layout, you can click on the plus icon and search for grid. And voila! Once you insert it, you will discover that it's the same block that you can transform into a column, into a row, or into a group. In this case, we just want the grid. And here on the right, you will see that you can switch the type of column grid. The manual one will let you select the columns, while the automatic one will let you select different kind of units, pixels, rem, or em, to define the number of columns of your grid layout. For example, if you want your columns to have a specific width, you can select pixels and you can use, for example, 250. And voila! And this will be reflected also on tablet and mobile. In my case, I will go with manual and I will use the three columns layout. Let's start adding some content to the first block here. In my case, I've just added a simple group with a heading, a paragraph and a button. And in the second column, I will add an image. I will need in this case to click on the plus icon here. It will be more intuitive to have a plus icon here, but it is like this. Okay, and let's add an image. It will be this one, let's see. Okay, now let's copy and paste the first one. I will just change the background color and then I will add another image. Okay, here we are now. And now I can go back to my grid settings and I can change, for example, the number of columns and this is my beautiful grid or I can change it like this and so on. But what happens if we want to create a bento style layout, which is kind of interesting and nice to see. I can go and keep it on three columns in my case and I will select the first group here 
this one. And if I go now to the style settings and I scroll down, I will see that there is a new option called column span. So in this case, for example, if I use this col the column span, I can choose how many columns this specific box should cover. For example, if I type in two, you will see that this box is taking up now two columns, which is awesome. And now that this call to action is taking up two column span, I will go and place this image two rows span to make it look like this. Beautiful. How can I do so? In this case, I will just need to transform this image into a group. So I click on the image, I add a group, okay? And then I will just get rid of this image. So three dots, delete. I will just need now to go to the group settings. Okay, here am I. I go to the styles and I see that there is this new option, which is background image. Add background image to the group, open media library. I will use the same image, but in this case, as you can see, this image will be applied to the background. So when I will go scrolling down to the style options here, I will see that the row span can be two. Voila, save. And if I go and reload the page, this is the result, beautiful. If I want, I can also transform this image into a group delete the image and assign the same image to the background of this group. Save. And so my bento style design is beautifully created and crafted like this using the grid layout. Coming up in WordPress 6.6. .6. Of course, you can easily swap content inside here and you can adjust everything using the powerful column span and row span as we just saw together. And when you go back now to your grid settings, you select the grid. You see, we, we had a, a lot of elements inside this grid. Uh, you can just play around in to the styles tab. You can add a text color, background color. You can play around adding a bit background image through to the whole block, for example. You can choose the typography dimensioning and so on. But most of all, you can play around with the block spacing here like this. For example, if I want to increase or decrease the spacing between the elements, I can play around like this. I can put it to zero if I want, and it will be like this. Or I can increase it or decrease it as I like. Save and Voila! Data view improvements. Another huge improvement is regarding the data view, the way that you see and browse your data into the new site editor. For example, in the previous version of WordPress, if you click on edit site, so you want to access the site editor, you find something like this, which is kind of uh, weird and uh, kind of difficult to navigate. And even here you see all the templates are not very easy to find out. And if you want to go and manage all the templates, you need to go to the templates, you need to scroll down to the manage all templates section here in order to see them like this. And if you want to see them in a grid view, you need to go here and select the layout grid. Okay, so this and have a, to have also a preview of all the content of the different uh, templates, you see. And now into the new version of WordPress, into the 6.6, .6, when you click on edit site, you will immediately have the ability to customize the template that you are on and you can quickly access the template management. You see, just one click and I'm in the same condition as I'm here. That here took me five or six clicks. And as you can see also, the design of this grid layout is a little bit different. You have a lot of small improvements. So this new layout, polished and very, very well organized, will become the foundation of the future of WordPress content management. Personally, I'm very excited about this. As you can see here, you have a lot of different options that you can use to switch between different layouts. For example, you can choose the table one, and then of course you can use the sorting. You can even decide to display or hide some fields, for example, the, the author, the description, I can get rid of them like this. And you can of course choose the number of items per page. A new list layout for pages and templates. One of the most interesting things of data view coming to WordPress 6.6 .6 is the new list layout. Voila, this is it. And as you can see here, you have all the different templates in our case, and you can simply click on them to have a quick preview on the right side which is beautiful, you see? I simply switch between different content here and I have a quick preview to the right side. In this case, these are all the templates, but I can apply the same quick preview also to pages. And I believe also that this will come to posts and also custom post types. So here I have all my pages. I can easily search them, filter them, and change, of course, the layout and the, the fields that I'm seeing and so on. And most of all here, as you can see, you can have a quick preview of all the pages of your website and easily jump and customize them just by clicking on them. Beautiful, you see? Go back here, all the pages. You go back here and you edit them. This is beautiful. Negative margins. 
And finally, in WordPress 6.6, .6, we also have a small but very powerful improvement, which is negative margins. And you can easily use this feature to create beautiful designs like this one or like this one. To use this new feature, you just need to select the block that you want to apply negative margin to. For example, in my case, it will be the button. You go to the Style tab and in the Dimension settings, you will see the margin, of course. And here you will be able to select, for example, the button in my case. You click on the Set Custom Size icon here. And here, finally, I will be able to put a negative value. Let's say minus 80. Voila, it is working perfectly. And if I want to do the same also in the upper part of this card, for example, since the images are not supporting negative margin, as you can see here at the moment, I'll just need to place this image inside a group, for example. And in this group, I will use the dimensions, margin, top, okay, minus 80 pixels. Voila, this is my new design. Let's have a quick preview. And voila, this is my new design with negative margins. Custom box shadows. And now if you're using a block theme, if you go on styles, you can see that you can finally customize shadows. You see here, you have all the shadows that are the presets in this case of our theme. And you can go inside each and every preset and simply change the values of your drop shadow. You can even add more values like this to create complex drop shadows effects. You can add custom shadow presets by clicking here on add shadow. You can go rename them and simply create your custom shadow effect. And once you have created them and customized them here, you will find them right inside your builder. You select a block, you go to the style tab, and if that specific block supports the shadow effect, you will find it here, you can enable it, and then you will find all your presets right here, which is awesome. And if you are not happy with the result, you can always control them globally from the edit site and styles tab shadows and that's it aspect ratio presets for images we have another small improvement regarding the image featured image and cover block and this is the aspect ratio presets basically when we use this kind of blocks we will have this new option here which is called aspect ratio and we will be able to easily switch between different presets portrait or widescreen or tall and so on. A new publish flow for pages and posts. In WordPress 6.6, we will see a completely redesigned publish flow for pages and posts. You will see now in the older version of WordPress, we have some tabs for pages and for posts. And each time we want to publish a new content, a new page or a new post, we have the summary tab with all these options here. We have the featured image, we have the discussion and so on. And we need a lot of different clicks and uh, all the different settings are not very well accessible and easy to understand and to manage. While in WordPress 6.6, .6, look at this. I love this polished and uh, minimalistic approach. We have the featured image here. We have uh, some information about the publishing of, of our page. We have the status and basically we can access each and every setting in a single click. I love it. And the same happens for posts. If I want to create a new post in WordPress 6.6, .6, you see here, I have the featured image. I can quickly add an excerpt here and I can change the status, choose when I want to publish this post. I can quickly ch change the URL and so on. So this new approach is very nice. We need less clicks and we can quickly access what we need in a quicker and more organized way. Section styles variations. Starting from WordPress 6.6, .6, block themes creators will be able to provide you with different style variations that you will be able to assign to your group of blocks, color palettes and font sets. And block themes developers will be able now to offer you the ability to mix and match fonts and color palettes with all the freedom that you need to create your own custom designs. So instead of being forced to use the themes presets for your styles, you will be able to create your own fonts and colors combination. New Gutenberg shortcuts. Speaking of the improvements of the Gutenberg site editor, we can now use a convenient shortcut to create some groups. For example, if I want to group all these listing items, I can select them and use the common G shortcut. And voila, I've just created a group. And now I also have another small improvement. I can go into the list block and I can use the indent by just clicking on the tab button on my keyboard. Rollbacks for plugin auto updates performance and accessibility improvements. In 6.6, .6, we also have rollbacks for plugin auto updates. So if an automatic update will break your website, you will be able to easily roll back to the previous version of that plugin. 
We then have a lot of performance updates and a lot, a lot of accessibility improvements, which is awesome. Before diving into the comments, thanks to the 570 people that have contributed to this new WordPress release. We know that there is a lot of work going on behind the scenes, so thank you very much. Now, I think that there are some crucial and very important features that if they will be added, for example, to WordPress 6.7 or 6.8, they will make me definitely abandon Elementor, Divi or any other page builder or even a classic theme in favor of the new site editor and block-based themes. Personally, I think that there are a few features that if they will be added to WordPress, they will add basically a new way, a new road to create WordPress websites. We just need more responsive options to define values for font sites or change the order of columns and sections on different devices, hover and focus state settings, more powerful flexbooks and grid options for groups and columns, a new of canvas block that can let us create custom mobile menus, for example. And then we finally are waiting for a unified experience into the WordPress admin area that will combine the old dashboard with the new site editing experience. I think that when all these kind of settings will come together to the next releases of WordPress, there will be actually a new native way to create and build complex WordPress websites. What do you think about it? Let me know in the comment section below and I hope that you will stay on my channel by selecting one of these two videos and by subscribing, hitting the thumbs up button. I wish you the best with all your WordPress projects and I hope to see you again in one of my next videos. Ciao, ciao!